Hello. Hello, doctor. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Just one note, yes? Yes. Okay, before we start going through the tutorial sheet, five questions. Do you, any, do you have any other questions from the lecture, from the past tutorial sessions or any general question? Yes, last two weeks, I really do apologize for the delay. Uh, the first one will be available by today midnight. But for the last week, I think we don't need any post lecture because we I went through two examples and the solutions or the examples are already available in the pre lecture slides. This is what, I, and if you want to see the detailed explanation, you can go. Anyway, I will have a look at that one as well. I can update it a little bit more by Sunday midnight. The first one would be available by today midnight. I really do apologize for the delay. The next one, Sunday midnight. Okay, any other question? Sir, with, yes. um, I was looking at the, the second example from um, this week's lecture. Um, yes. We haven't, we haven't done, I was just thinking with the constrained motion. Just the the forces at hand. Which 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 forces will there be um, a reaction force? Because I think there's going to you've got an mg downwards, so you're going to have to have some kind of reaction force up. Because you have okay, because you have frictionless motion. Well, so like, it didn't it didn't say frictionless anywhere, so I wasn't sure. Are you sure? Be, I, I don't know if you can pull it pull it up or something. But. Yeah, I, I know, the, the complete solution I think is already uploaded on Blackboard. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't find. I was looking earlier today. I don't know if it's gone up today. Maybe maybe the last lecture. I should move it to the, you know, the lecture before. You know, um, there's no, there's no, there's no solutions from this le from the lecture we had on. on okay, on I will do it after, after tutorial in one hour. I will upload it because okay. already I have it. Anyway, let me. Have a look at that one. Yes, yes. Also, so will we have? Um, will there be a drop-in session this Monday, even though it's um, bank holiday? Yes, yes, yes. No, oh, it's bank holiday. I think so. I'm not sure. Anyway, I will be there if, 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 if yes, you're there. That's great. Yes, Thank it's you. Bank holiday, doctor. Uh, for you. Will you be there anyway, or no? Yes, I will be. If if for you it's okay, I can be there. Yeah, I don't know about for us, but yeah, personally, I'll be there. Oh, it says it's smooth. In the question, it says okay. Let me copy paste this. The other student can see as well. Anyway, upload the video. The video includes everything. I was, also, I was also thinking about um the you no know, the reaction forces due yes yes, yes to um the the yeah. weight due to the weight yes, where that yes, where yes. those where the, where those forces are being and if really it's trying to push to go outwards and it's just been constrained yes. is there also a reaction force in the x dimension because that'll make a difference to the moments yeah, this, is, this is the problem yes yeah 
that one. Okay, anyway, the video will be uploaded in one hour after the tutorial session. Is, it just, is, there, is there reaction forces okay, at yes. point A and at point B? The smooth, the smooth means frictionless. Okay. In general, you can have, okay, you don't know what's the direction of the force. Like a structure's one, you just assume some direction for the force, yes? So that's a force from the wall, from the wall um, onto the. Yeah, always we have a reaction force based on Newton's theory from the surface. Yes. Right, because no, I was assuming if that's pushing, if that's going to go that way, then or if it's trying to pivot around the center point, then that's going to push out I don't to the know. left. I don't know the direction. Like a structure is one, or any problem in physics, when you don't know the direction, you just assume some direction. And we can we also say there's a reaction force at A going up because of mg going down. Up or down. Doesn't uh, so there's a there's a reaction force going up. Exactly. Up or down. Again, I don't know the direction. I just assume some direction. Yes. But all of those will contribute to the moment because they aren't going through G. Exactly, exactly. And I have a weight here as well. Then after calculation, if you your calculated value be positive, it means your initially assumed direction is correct. If it's negative, it means you should reverse. Yes? Yeah. And the, the free. Okay, in general, you have friction as well here. Again, I don't know in which direction because I don't. Okay, I know. But so there sure. isn't friction because it's smooth. Exactly. But in general, it can be a friction. But because of smooth friction would be here. Okay, I'm just also which which angle it says theta the angle theta is 30. Which angle is theta? I wasn't clear on the diagram. Is that the angle between the pole and the horizontal or the pole and the and the vertical? One. Yes, I that's think theta. It's okay. I think it's this one. And the 0. 0.6 meters is the length either side, so it's a 1.2 overall. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank the you. Total length is exact. And I will upload the video. Anyway, I will go through the most difficult question from this tutorial session. And again, you will see we follow the same strategy. There is nothing new in, some, in, in terms of concept, very similar to the example we solve in the lecture. Okay, it says it's difficult, difficult maybe in terms of managing the time and playing with mathematical formulation. But if you could understand the simple examples which we solve in the lecture, you can follow exactly the same procedure. And I will show you in one hour time. You can go through the other questions if you face any problem because we have drop-in session on Monday and also next lecture would be question and answer on Tuesday. We can go through them on Tuesday, don't worry. And we have a revision class. The final lecture would be revision class as well. Anyway, I will show you in one hour, there are more than one approach to solve it. We, we will cover at least two approaches. One approach is provided in the solution sheet already available. Okay, here, how many rigid body do you have? The rolling example, I will upload it in one hour after today's tutorial. Um, the video. Okay, how many rigid body do we have here? Two. Two. Then we can write the relative motion for both of them. I have a fixed observer, yes. The fixed observer is, I, and each observer must be equipped with a coordinate system. If you remember from the lecture, for fixed observer, the coordinate system is fixed, doesn't translate, doesn't rotate, and we usually use capital letter. This is for fixed observer. And now I, I, I have another observer but it's rotating, yes? Here in this case, my rigid body doesn't translate, just rotation. It's rotating with rigid body. Please stop me 
at any point which is not clear and don't feel shy at all, even if you think your question is crazy. Because here, today's session is just to help you for better understanding. Uh, okay, now we have, for this rotating one, I have two options. Then fix observer, I use red color. And each observer must be equipped with a coordinate system. And another observer which sits under rigid body. It means it's rotating. For this one, you have many options to choose the coordinate system. For example, you can say this is the coordinate system for rotating observer. Yes, this is one option. But if you look at the tutorial solution sheet, they said, okay, I want my observer be equipped with these coordinate system. It doesn't matter. At the end, you will see the result the same. I, in today's lecture, today's session, I follow both approaches to show you it doesn't matter what's your coordinate system but your coordinate system must follow the movement of the rigid body. First, we follow the approach of the solution sheet. This is for moving observer. It means your, okay, if it rotates more, for example, if this one rotates, at this instant, this is the coordinate system. But if this rigid body rotates a little bit more, definitely your coordinate system should rotate with it as well, like this. The coordinate system always following the rigid body motion. But at this instant, interestingly, we can see the coordinate system of fixed observer and moving observer are equivalent just at this instant, because after, you know, a period of time, the coordinate system of moving observer will rotate the rigid body, but at this specific instant. Why they are equivalent? Because if you see the I hat, which is the unit vector for fixed observer coordinate system. And the lowercase I hat, the lowercase J hat. You see they have, they have the same lengths, you know, capital J. Okay, the magnitude of the horizontal unit vectors are the same. Yes, because both of them are unit vectors. It means their magnitude are one. I just draw them with different lengths to distinct, you know, but in reality, they are over each other. They have the same lengths. Okay, when two vectors have the same direction If the, if the bar is tilted. Okay, at this specific instant, for example, at time t, they are equivalent. But as I, I told you, if the bar moves a little bit more at time t plus delta t, definitely this coordinate system x rotates with the rigid body and the unit vectors, they don't have the same direction. And they are just at this instant. Yeah, be careful. And the, we are lucky because the question asked to calculate the, these parameters just at this specific instant. Okay. That's why I emphasize many times just this. Instant. Okay, when two vectors <laughs> When two vectors have the same magnitude, 
I had and I had, both of them are same magnitude and same direction. Yes, we say these are equivalents. Yes, and similarly for the vertical axis unit vector, J hat and J hat. Then in this case, doesn't matter. You describe the velocity acceleration in the moving observer coordinate system, lower case or in upper. That's why if you look at the solution sheet, you just describe everything in the move because they are equivalents. And when they are equivalent, it doesn't matter which one you use. But in the next approach, second approach, which I use this coordinate system for moving observer. Yes, they are not any more equivalent. And when I calculate things in this coordinate, I should transfer to fixed observer coordinate. We will cover both approach to show you the result is independent of the chosen coordinate system. Okay, then we already decided this is my coordinate system for moving observer. Similarly, we'll have the same thing for rigid body AC, the same. First, we look at the rigid body AB. If you remember from the lecture for rigid body, we had two situations and we went through it in detail. We proved everything conceptually, mathematically. And I told you, if you don't want to go through those explanation and proofs, you need just this single slide. This single slide is more than enough to solve any kind of problem from simple to most difficult one in relative motion. Okay, what's the difference between them? Can you explain to me, one of the students can explain what's, what's the difference between these two columns? Do you remember? It was one where you're, the observer's moving with the rigid body, so sitting at the base and one's external to the rigid body? Yeah, exactly. The observer always sits on rigid body, yes? It's moving and rotating with rigid body, which is A, yes, my moving observer. Yes. But the difference is, in this case, which you have VREL, the particle that you look at it, yes, is not a point of rigid body. Yes, it means the length of RAB is not constant. That's why you have relative velocity. This is what we discuss in detail. If you want, you can check the lecture. But in the other case, again, my observer was there made you analogy with Earth. Exactly, exactly, exactly. The same thing. The slide after this, if you look at that lecture, it's the air spinning and carbon. Again, in this case, your observer is, si is sitting or fixed on the rigid body. It means it moves, translate, rotate with rigid body. And, but here, the point B, which you want to analyze it using your moving observer measurements, which we call relative measurements, this point B belongs to rigid body. B belongs to rigid body. And from the definition of rigid body, we know the distance between any two points is constant. RAB, the magnitude is constant. And when it's constant, the relative velocity between them is zero. This is what, we, this is the only difference. Then, if you want to summarize, in this case, B doesn't belong to rigid body, but in this case, B belongs to rigid body. That's why 
Here we don't have the last term, which is VRL and ARL. The other terms are exactly the same. Now I need your help. This pin, yes, which we can call A, for example, pin A, yes. Okay. Does it belong to rigid body, this rigid body, whatever you call rigid body B, for example? Yes or no? No, because it can move around within the rigid body. Perfect. Then which one should I use? Left hand column. Exactly. Everyone is happy? That's it. If you decide, if you fix the coordinate system properly, and you choose this one, the rest is just playing with mathematical formulation, which you need just to practice to manage the time. See, it's very simple, very, very simple. Even if you want to skip all those proofs that we went through to make the concept clear, you need just these two columns. Now, the rest is just replacing the X. You help me. Then is VA equals to VB. See, I just rewrite this equation. Plus rigid body, angular velocity, the relative position of A with respect to observer B plus V rel between A and B. Okay. What's VB? Can you help me? Zero. VB is translational velocity, yes? In fact, if you remember, I said more precisely VB with respect to O. O is your fixed observer. Equipped with, the, yes. Because the B doesn't translate. The moving observer doesn't translate with respect to the fixed observer. Then translational, be careful, translational velocity is zero. But the coordinate system of B rotates with respect to B observer, then its angular velocity is not zero. Translational velocity is zero because it doesn't translate, but angular is not zero because it can rotate with respect. Initially far very intended six person just to clarify. And as the result was the total percentage of all grid. 15% is for quizzes. Yes, you had three, three percent, and this last one is six percent plus five percent lap. Total is twenty percent, and eighty percent is exam. Is it clear? So do we say we, we, because this specific time, not this, this is this specific time, okay. What's the B? Good question. What's the B? If you look at the video lecture, we went through the proof. The B is translational. Yes, translational velocity. It means it's due to translation, yes, of observer B with respect to fixed observer O. Do you agree? Can you confirm in chat box each step? Thank you. This is translational. At the same time, we have angular velocity which is omega. This is due to rotation. Can you tell me this observer B, does it translate with respect to point O, not just at 
this instant in general at all instants. Does it translate? No, because it's lock 2.0. Okay. I need confirmation of the... Exactly, no, at all. Therefore, there is no translation between B and O. When there is no translation, what does it mean? Translational velocity is zero. But it rotates. When it rotates, you have rotation, then you have angular velocity. Then omega is not zero. Very good. Good question. No, we carry on. No, you help me to replace things. We carry on. Okay, if I look at which kind of input do we have, has counterclockwise angular velocity. Okay, in this chosen coordinate system, can you tell this is my X? This is my Y? Where is the direction of Z? Based on right hand rule. Do you agree this is the Z? Which is counter yeah. outwards. Yeah. Yes, anticlockwise and all points outward. This is okay. Now, this in this coordinate system, this is the given omega, this is the given alpha. Both of them are positive, yes. Then this is zero. This is the two positive k hat. And again, K hat, capital K hat, and K hat, they are equivalent just at this instant. Or in general, no. K hat at all points are, because always are perpendicular. They have the same direction. R A B, what's R A B? This length. Eight. I hat, or you can put I hat, because at this specific instant they are equivalent. In solution sheet, they just went through this one because they are equivalent. Plus four hundred zero point four. I just converted to meter J hat or capital J, doesn't matter. What about this one, VRL? Do we have any information about it? No. Till now, do you have any question till now? You just replace the things. Okay. 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 Now we look at the V rel. Do you agree that the V relative of the pin? Yes. With respect to rigid body is always in this direction. Okay, can be this direction or that direction. Do you agree? Yes. The observer who sits, just imagine you're sitting on this rigid body. Yes? Do you agree? This value for RAB is not correct? Why is not correct? Let me clear this thing. This is my X component. Yes, positive. This is the position vector. This is RAB. It has two components. This one is 
0 0.8 i hat in positive direction yes and vertical one is 0 0.4 j is it clear now okay Okay, now I need your help for V relative. V relative is something that measured by observer B due to translation of moving point A. Do you agree if you sit, you are the observer sits on the rigid body B. The V relative is always in this direction, the same direction as the attitude of the rigid body itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it can be in this direction or this direction, doesn't matter. We just assume one. If the positive value, if the calculated value for it be positive, it means it's correct. If it's negative, then it means it's not correct. I just say this. This is VREL. And this angle in solution should it's called beta. You can measure the beta, yes? Because the tangent beta is equal to four over eight. Then the beta is tangent inverse four over eight. Then this V relative can be written as the magnitude of V rel, yes, cosine beta in I hat direction plus V relative. This V relative is the magnitude of vector, velocity vector, sine beta J hat. Do you agree? Yeah. Thank you. Then if I want to summarize VA, this is zero, doesn't matter. It's two K hat cross product A I hat plus Zero point six plus VRL cosine beta I hat plus VRL sine beta J. No, VRL is not zero point eight. Who said VRL? I don't know the viral, I want to calculate. I don't know its value. No, no, this is R, B. Okay. No, here you, you have two options to calculate it. One option is like in the solution sheet you can write the determinants, yes? I had J. I don't know which one is easier for you. And one approach is the approach we use in the lecture usually. The first vector and the second vector, 0 0.8, 0 0.40. Yes? Do you agree with this determinant? You know from calculus, yes? Or whatever, well, what usually I follow, I don't go through this way, it's up to you. I just say it's 1.6 K hat, I hat. K I for me is J. 
plus 0 0.8 k hat j hat is minus i. It's up to you. You can follow this or follow this one. Then again, I just write in the clear form VA equals to Z16 point J hat minus I hat plus zero the sign beta I hat plus zero sine beta J. And we can simplify a little bit more. The I components, it's V rel cosine beta minus. This is the horizontal component of the velocity of point A, absolute one, because this is in fact is A with respect to O. For simplicity, we drop this part and we rel sine beta plus 1.6 j. We have one equation, two unknown. This is one unknown and the VREL is another unknown. It's not enough to solve. We need another equation. Okay, do you know where does it come from, the second equation? Any from the second rigid body. Sorry? From the second rigid body. Exactly, from the second rigid body. We, we can calculate everything or repeat everything now for rigid body. C. Well, now, again, I want to write this formula, but you should be careful. This pin A, does it belong to rigid body C or not? Yes. 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 Then which one should I use? Left or right? Right, right hand side. Right hand side. When the point B belongs to rigid body. You see, the only difference is this last term, V rel and A rel, we don't have. Then I just write this one. I write V A equals to V C. And similarly, you see if I copy paste this one, let me to copy paste the formula. Let's edit copy. So. Okay. Again, you need to put a fixed observer, same thing. This is moving observer, this is fixed observer. And at this instant, sorry, my, they are equivalent just at this instant. You can- is, is that just because there's no omega? There is omega, but that if this instant, this rigid body is perpendicular to the horizontal line. But definitely if this one has some omega, yes, and alpha, which are given, yes, both of them are con Yes, definitely this yeah. one will have in this direction. The omega of this one, we call omega C, would be in the same direction, yes? So is it just, there is the omega C times R, which is just equal to zero at the moment because it's perpendicular? 
omega c by r is zero? No, it's not zero. Why is zero? No, because isn't normally the velocity v a if v c is on the rigid body is just we get rid of the relative, but the v okay. isn't that normally equal to? Don't you normally have to add um, omega yeah, omega yeah. omega cross r? V of a is in this direction. Yes, and this is r a. Yes. And V was R omega, yes? V is R, V as in V, V, C with regards to V, A is V, C plus R omega, yeah? Exactly, yes. So why haven't we put it in this formula we just wrote? You said it's the no. same. No, no, you can't do, yeah, exactly. But I want to follow the general to show you the general procedure. Even if the C moves or translate, you can follow the same procedure. I want to show you, not afraid if you see in some case this one. If you follow exactly the same procedure and you set everything clearly, the rest is just playing with mathematical. That's why I follow the general form. But you're right, the VC is zero and that, that can be only. This is what we will see few seconds. Then is omega c bar r a c. Again, the moving observer at point C does not translate with respect to fixed observer the translation of the same reasoning we had before. This omega, do you agree? Can you see it? If the omega of this rigid body be counterclockwise, the omega of the second rigid body would be counterclockwise as well. Do you agree? Yeah. Very good. Then it's just omega C plus K hat. Then RAC, what's RAC? It has just J. Exactly, 0 0.J hat. Yes? That's it. Then you can say 0 plus or we don't need the zero. Again, you can write the determinant for this multiplication. This has just Z components. Omega C, this one. Just J component. And if we calculate it, you will see omega C I. If I write it clearly, V A is equal to and this is okay. It completely is consistent with what we observe from the physics, yes. V A direction is opposite to the I hat direction, yes? Any question till now? Yes, no? No. Then the rest is very easy. You have two formula for VA. First one is from first rigid body. One second one is from second rigid body. The left hand sides are equal. Definitely the right hand sides should be equal as well. Then if I put them equal, it would be minus zero omega c i hat v rel cosine beta. B 
Yeah. When two vectors are equal, it means their components must be equal. Then if I put the I hat terms equal, omega C equals to zero, the horizontal components must be equal. And here, do we have on left hand side any horizontal components? No, sorry, vertical. And the vertical components must be equal as here. Now I have two equations, how many unknowns? Just two unknowns, yes? Because we know the beta. This is 0 0.0, 0 .0. this is bt, you can calculate. Then from this one, you have omega c, you have v rel. Then if you replace one of them in one of these equation, you will have v a. Okay, is it clear? Yeah. I don't go through the acceleration because acceleration is exactly the same. You need just to play more with vector calculus. And believe me, this is maybe the most difficult question, but you see, if you follow exactly the same procedure, it's very, very easy to solve it. You need just to be careful about setting it. No, I want to solve it using different approach, which is not provided in the solution sheet. So what happens to the second part of that question where you've got the gap rather than the pin? Is that is that going to be the same idea or different? If you go up to the question, it says for part B, um, the, of the acceleration of the, there's a part where it asks the acceleration of the slot. Yeah, in part A, it asks relative relative the pin a relatively to the slot in a b yeah yeah it means this you... VRL. they mean this VRL. the pin with respect to a slot a slot belongs to what to rigid body b yes in fact it means the velocity of pin a with respect to rigid body b because it a slot a slot a slot is a part of rigid body b yes okay it's not just with respect to Okay. It means with respect to B. Okay. With respect to a slot, yes? A slot is part of the rigid body B, yes? Can you confirm? Isn't isn't B just the point on the on the on the rigid body? B, B is a representative point of the rigid body. My observer sits, but doesn't matter, it can sit at B or at any point. Because the points of rigid body doesn't translate with respect to each other. You can measure it. The translational measurements are always the same. It's very easy to show it, to prove it. If you want, I, we can discuss it in the rapid session. Okay, how can you calculate the relative velocity of a particle with, to, with respect to a rigid body? You need to select a representative point, yes? single point. It's very easy to show. It doesn't matter which point of rigid body you choose. The translational relative velocity is always the same. With, with respect to a slot, because a slot belongs to rigid body, means with respect to rigid body. And so rigid, the, body, so rigid the, body means the representative point, the point that the moving observer sits on it, yes? So is that saying, saying the, the velocity of any particle exterior to the rigid body relative to the rigid body is the same depending, well, it doesn't depend on where on the rigid body you make it relative. The relative, if you measure this yeah. one, it can be with respect to, it's, it's, it takes 10 minutes. Can we discuss in the drop-in session? Because I don't want to, I can easily show you. Yes. Okay, yeah, I'll come to the drop-in session. I, I will, yeah, if you come yeah. to the drop-in session, we can easily discuss. Okay, then with respect to a slot means respect to rigid body, and rigid body means the moving observer, which sits on rigid body. And it, this moving observer must be equipped with the coordinate system. Now you may say, 
we just quickly go through the second approach, which is not provided in the solution sheet. But you will see it's very easy. You may say, I want to choose this coordinate system for the moving observer. X, Y. And this fixed coordinate system for fixed observer. You see, they are not equivalent anymore. And when the question asks to calculate uh, anything, it means you should calculate in this coordinate system. If you remember, we solve one example in the lecture. No, in this example, if you help me, it's exactly the same thing. Now, can you help me? What's the VREL in this example? Okay, we we agreed that VREL can be in this direction. Do you agree that VREL in this coordinate system is magnitude i hat? Yeah. Yes? Thank you. And RAB, what's this length? Anyway, this length is L is equal to 0 0.2 to the power of 2 plus 0 0.4. 894. Yeah, I, I just call it L. I have the value. It's L I hat, yes? Do you agree? Yeah. Omega is the same, is 2k hat, and this is it. No, but here you should be careful. Now you are working in moving observer because you are using the lowercase unit vectors. After you calculate everything, this is the important point which we did in the example we solved in the lecture as well. Okay. After you solve everything, for example, you come up with VREL equals to some number, for example, alpha. And I had, you, you calculate this one. But this is not the final answer because this one is measured in moving coordinate system. But I can easily relate the unit vectors of moving observer to the fixed observer because at this instant, at this specific, this is I hat, this is J hat, this is I hat, this is J hat, and this is beta, yes? Do you agree? And I have the yeah. beta. Beta is tangent inverse 4 over 8. I need just replace this one by i hat is equals to magnitude of i hat. Unit vector magnitude is 1. Cosine beta plus, oh, this is horizontal j hat. Yes, this is its horizontal. I'm sorry, it's I hat. Plus magnitude of I hat, sine beta, J hat. Do you agree? It would be... So L when you said, when you say V rel is equal to alpha, you don't mean um, alpha as in an acceleration, you just mean as a, oh, as a, so as some a value, number. Some number. Value, some value. Sorry, I use bad notation. <laughs> some value, yeah, magnitude. Some number, yes. The magnitude of VREL. 
which we calculate, we can calculate it using the same procedure. Yes, at the end you have the magnitude of VRL, yes. This one I called alpha yeah. or some number, whatever you call it. Gamma, for example. Gamma. I want us to say we know this value at the end we can. Then after we know this value, we need just to replace the coordinate system. This is cosine beta. I had you replace, then you have everything with respect to fixed observer coordinate system, sine beta. And similarly for j hat, you have minus sine beta i hat plus sine beta j. This is the only point that when your coordinate system are not equivalent, the moving up, you need to switch at the end. Can we simplify, use the second COVID the same? Yes, this is approach. This is, you mean the fixed observer coordinate system? You assume, yes, you can do it as well, but it's a little bit weird, but yes, you can do it. But you, you must state clearly because, you know, in the exam, I want to see this is your fix. This is, you're right. You, you may say, I want to have the same fixed observer. But you know, this fixed observer doesn't rotate just at this. It's correct as well. If you state it clearly, it's accept, but it's a little bit weird. That's it. That's it. I think. Uh, Go through the other questions. If you want to discuss, we can discuss them as well. To be honest with you, I don't, because I got these past exam papers from the last lecturer, the former lecturer, and they just provided these papers to me. I don't have 2018 and 19. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. Maybe I have to contact Carol, the admin. Can you email me and remind me that I can contact Carol to see maybe they have it or not? Okay, from the last year, last year was formative assessment. We didn't have any exam because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And they are very difficult. If you want, I can put it there because but because it was formative assessment, not summative, it's very difficult. If you want, I can put them as well, the last, but it's difficult. <laughs> That's why I didn't put <laughs> no, because the exams are not usually that difficult. But for 2018 and 19, if you email me, I can contact the admin, they may have it, yes. I apologize because these are the things I just received from the last lecture. Anyway, I'm here. If you have any more questions, I'm here. Even after 4 p.m., feel free to ask your question. Thank you for your time and attendance. Um, see you on Monday for drop-in session and Tuesday for question and answer session. All the best. And I really appreciate if you can provide the online feedback. Thank you very much. All the best. Um, yes, please. If there is no question, we can end the meeting. If, oh, could you upload the video solution to this part? Okay, I can I can upload the recorded video of this session. Is it enough? Okay. I upload the today's session video in the tutorial folder. Yes. I will do it. Okay, all the best, have a good day.
see you on Monday or Tuesday. That's Thank you, Dr. C. No problem. Thanks for Thank you, sir. No problem. Bye. -bye.